In this Excel model, we are going to look at how the use of leverage in the capital structure of a firm will affect the risk of its stock. The capital structure of a firm refers to the fact that funds for the firm come in different forms. In our example, money can come in either as equity or debt. The equity represents the ownership of the firm, that means the shareholders own the firm. The debt come from the creditors to the firm, that means the firm borrow money either from a bank or borrow directly from capital market. If there is higher and higher debt used in the capital structure of the firm, we say the firm is using higher and higher leverage. What we are going to show is that as the leverage level used by the firm is become higher and higher, the risk of its stock will be higher and higher. In this example, the number we are showing is that the standard deviation of the return on equity will be higher and higher as the leverage increase. Why do we say higher standard deviation of return on equity means higher risk for the stock? That is because the return on equity indicates how much profit a firm can generate for its shareholders, or say the profitability to its equity. Higher standard deviation of return on equity means the profitability on its equity, or say on its stock, will fluctuate in a wider range. That will translate into wider range fluctuation for the stock price of the firm. Higher fluctuation in the stock price, that means higher risk for the stock of this firm. Okay, now let's go back to the capital structure of the firm to start our discussion. The first level of leverage we are considering here is zero. And uh, in this case, uh, the shareholders put down 100% equity to finance this firm. In our example, uh, the total assets is $1,000. So when the leverage is zero, the shareholders put down $1,000 for this firm. The next level of leverage is 50%. So the fi firm is financed with $500 debt, a half of that $1,000 total assets, and the shareholders only need to put down $500 as equity. If we increase the leverage to 70%, now the shareholders only need to put down $300 and the firm borrow $700 as debt. The highest leverage level we are considering here is $800 and the shareholders in this case only need to put down $200 and the firm borrow $800 to form this $1,000 total assets. For the debt, the firm need to pay interest payment. Let's assume the interest rate is 10% every year. So if the firm borrow 50% uh, of its total assets, the firm need to pay $50, 10% of that $500 debt. If the firm use 70% leverage, the firm need to pay $70, 10% of that $700 debt. If the leverage is 80%, the firm need to pay $80 as the interest payment. The firm pays the interest payment out of its gross income. There are two scenarios in gross income for the firm to generate with equal probabilities, uh, 50 and 50. The first scenario is $80 gross income, and the next one, the second scenario, is $160 gross income. First, let's discuss the first scenario first. If the firm use no leverage, uh, all the $80 in gross income will go to the shareholders. And when we calculate the return on equity, that is $80 divided by what's in column C, this $1,000 in equity. If the firm use 50% leverage, the shareholders need to pay $50 in interest payment, and there will be 
uh, $30 left for the shareholders to take home. The return on equity now is 6%, that's $30 divided by $500 shareholders' equity. If the firm use 70% leverage, uh, the net income left for the shareholders is only $10 in the first scenario, and uh, only a slightly about 3% return on equity. If the firm use 80% leverage, uh, there will be nothing left for the shareholders, and uh, of course the return on equity will be zero. Now we observe that as the leverage going higher and higher, uh, the net income become lower and lower, and uh, the return on equity under the first scenario also decrease as the leverage going up. The reason is that the net income decrease very fast in the first scenario compared to the decreasing equity. Remember, as the leverage going up, the equity also decrease. But uh, under the first scenario, the equity decrease slower than the decrease in the net income here in this column. So the return on equity decrease very fast. Under the second scenario, uh, it is $160 minus whatever the uh, interest payment has to be. So what we are looking at here is again 160 minus either uh, 50, 70, or uh, $80. So the net income also decreases under the second scenario. How about the return on equity? Return on equity is still this net income divided by the equity numbers in column C, 1,500, 300, and 200. But the return on equity here we calculated under scenario 2 is increasing as the leverage going up, different from the first scenario. Why is that? That is because even though the net income is decreasing, the equity is decreasing faster than the decrease in the net income. So the decrease in equity effect uh, take over. That result in an increasing in the return on equity as the leverage going up. 